Test one, two. Test one, two. All right, everything seems to be working just fine. All right, we're just waiting for some. Okay. All right, we are recording. And uh, welcome to tonight's demo. It's going to be of some peppers, as you can see. And we are going to start with a drawing. I draw, for those of you who are watching for the first time, and I think there are some people, if I post this on YouTube, that are going to be watching this for, for the first time. So I'm going to treat this demo like I've never done one before. And I'm going to go over a few things that I've said a whole bunch of times. Um and uh, in an effort to be as clear as possible. So I always draw in burnt umber and white. And I draw a little bit darker than uh, the tone of my canvas. And uh, okay, so I mix burnt umber and white and try to draw a little bit darker than tone of my canvas. One of the things that I think people are surprised by um, when they see me actually do a demo is how loose a drawing I start out with. In comparison to the end result, which is often very tight. I don't measure initially. Um, look at that. Can't get much more accurate than that. And then from the back of the pepper to the other pepper. Once again, pretty spot on. Uh, now that's not just that's that's not amazing talent. That's that's twenty years of doing this. That's all that is. But it's why I don't measure first. I like to see if I can get it right before I measure. So like even right here on this pepper. I could measure this, but I'm not going to. I am going to measure, I feel like I'm a little bit off on one area. So I'm going to measure. Yeah, I thought so. So I didn't have enough room to get this distance in. And then there's a piece here. And then this comes up here.
Okay. Now, because I have a lot of lines, it's getting really dark. I take my paper towel and I fold it so that it's flat. And then remove all that heavy paint. Keep it flat. And that's what my teacher, Daniel Green, would call a ghost. A very, very light drawing that you can now come in, add a little bit more burnt umber to your mixture, get a little darker, and then redraw. And this drawing will be a little bit more accurate. And so now I know that And one of the things that I'm going to do in this first drawing is just try to see the big angles, not little angles, big angles. And I'll probably make three, maybe four drawings. We'll see. It's been a while since I've done a demo. If you've been following these, that you know I've got some family stuff going on. And I've been away a lot. In fact, the last one was watercolor because I did, it was in Arizona and I didn't bring oil paint with me. Just brought drawing material and watercolors. It was fun, but I'm not really a watercolorist, so can't expect the end result to be as good when you're not really a watercolorist. Although I sh it, it was definitely an eye opener that I need to do a little bit more practice with my watercolor. I don't need to be as exact as I would be if this was a still life that I was planning on sending to one of my galleries. Because it's a demo, it's more about showing the technique than it is wasting a lot of time trying to get my drawing perfect. And what I'm probably going to do, because there's nobody in this meeting watching it live with us, it's just me, um, which is fine. A lot of people like to like to watch them on their own time uh but because there's nobody in here i'm probably going to break this up into two segments and do the drawing in one video and then do the painting part in another video and i've been doing that lately just in case for some reason one of them doesn't record at least I get one of the two videos to post. Because that happened once where I made a video, went to go and find it, and it wasn't there. And so if I make two videos, I know at least hopefully one of them will, will be there. Need to put out a little bit more burnt umber. Didn't put out quite enough. Well, I've been painting all day, so I went through my burnt umber. So I have to put a little more out.
And I'm going to start in the middle of this pepper because, well, no, I'm not. I'm going to start at the front of this pepper. And each time I draw, I try to get a little bit more accurate. So I guess you call this drawing number three. I have often said, if you can draw, you can paint. The biggest obstacle that I see and people not learning how to paint is that they actually don't know how to draw. And at my last show, uh, I met a comic book artist who was interested in learning how to oil paint. And we, 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 you know, exchanged ideas and he's, he's amazing. He's an amazing artist. And he, he actually purchased the painting from me, which is like the best compliment in the world. And, um, he was he, he wants to move into oil painting and you know you can tell someone that you know if they can draw that it's going to be super easy but but it's it's one thing that to say that or hear that and it's another thing to actually believe it and do it but but i know that like with a little bit of, of practice this guy would be an absolutely amazing oil painter because he can draw so well and that's that's really so much of it is and I've even had students come up to me and say, oh, I just want to learn how to draw real fast so I can start oil painting. And it's just like, <laughs> the more time you spend drawing, the easier oil painting is going to be. There's, there's no shortcut. There's no, oh, oh, I just want to learn how to draw real quick. It, it, it took me a very, very long time to learn how to draw. I'm still learning how to draw. I still see see people see every once in a while another artist's work. I'll just be like, wow, that's a, that's amazing. Although it's a, it, it's hard to be blown away right now because so many people are, are cheating. You you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a great drawing, and then you find out that they you know just projected it and traced it. It's just like, oh, well, that's not really all that great. Or, or it's a digital artist who painted over you know, right over a photograph and you're like, huh, eh, all right. I'm not all that impressed or, you know, now with AI where this, they didn't do anything at all. But occasionally you meet someone who's, who still enjoys the process and doing it right. I draw everything I see. And I'm drawing shapes. As Dan used to say, I draw everything I see, everything I see, I think I see, and some things I'm not sure I saw at all. I'm putting a shape right here. I'm not sure I see it all. But it's a cool shape. I love these peppers that fold over on themselves like this all the time. It's really cool. But the more I capture, the more I capture in the drawing, the the better the, the painting is going to be. And actually, everything I'm doing right now, uh, I learned from figure drawing. And in fact, in Scottsdale Artist School, towards the end of the year, I'm going to actually be teaching a class called uh, Everything I Know about still life painting, I learned from figure drawing. And what I'm going to do is go into how I learned how to draw like this from figure drawing. And we're going to have live figure drawing models in the class. And, and then you can choose between doing figure drawing, still life, both. You can do one in the morning, one in the afternoon. I'm hoping to make it a lot of fun.
Okay. There's a stem in here. That's wonderful. Big ugly stem. And then we get the red pepper. And then get this stem of the pepper. I simplified that, but I can always make that more complicated later. Now, I've noticed that this pepper is leaning against here. Uh, in my still life. If you look, it's leaning against this first one. And I actually prefer the design of my painting over the design of the still life. So I can fix that by simply moving that pepper right there. And now it's, and now it's more like uh, my painting. It's, it's the epitome of I'm right and the world is wrong. I draw with... Um, Princeton uh, 4050R, which is the R is for round. And uh, these are watercolor brushes and they're not designed for oil painting, but what they are is they feel, they feel like pencils to me. And one of the things when I was learning how to paint, uh, it was at Scottsdale Artist School in Arizona where I now teach. Um, and uh the popular instruction at that time, which is the early 2000s, I guess, um, was bigger brushes and more paint, bigger brushes and more paint. And all the, all the instructors had their hands full of brushes and they made very big and, and, and they were all impressionist painters and they were the big brushes, more paint, big brushes. And I made a really big, bright, colorful mess and I hated it. And they were all working on a white canvas. And um, so I had all this paint everywhere and this white canvas. And I thought, this isn't how I learned how to draw. And I'm going to teach myself how to draw the way I learned how to paint. Teach myself to paint the way I learned how to draw. Excuse me. And so I bought, uh, I always use Strathmore charcoal papers for my tone drawings. And so I got them out and I mixed up some colors and I toned all my canvases the same colors as Strathmore charcoal paper. And I bought a bunch of paint brushes that looked and felt like pencils. And I taught myself how to paint the same way I taught myself how to draw. And that's how it worked for me, which is a very unique method that I don't see every day. I don't see a lot of people um, using this approach. It's, it's a lot of it's my teacher, Daniel Green, which you can, you can learn a lot of, of how I'm working by watching one of his videos. Uh, I think they're still available. He passed away last year, but his videos should still be floating around.
Now, I've mentioned this a hundred times, and I'm going to mention it again. Um, I like to put the highlights in right away. I don't think anything I do has ever gotten more criticism or insults from magazine articles and galleries. People love to question. Even even Dan once said, why, why are you doing that? Um, I just like the way it looks. Um, I think it looks cool, which is not a great reason to do it, but it's the reason. And so why do I have to lie and say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it because it looks cool. Yeah, I'm doing it because it looks cool. Uh, but also, I like to indicate the brightest, the brightest bright and the deepest dark first. Which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So that's the lightest light. And then the deepest dark is here. Underneath this pepper. And then there's another deep dark right here. Maybe one here. Now, I would probably at this point let that uh, let this dry. I don't always go right into uh, more more paint. Uh, but because this is a demo, uh, the other thing that I want to mention is my my other second favorite paintbrush is a Q-tip dunked in a little bit of Gamsol. Is is one of my favorite paintbrushes because you can do a lot of erasing with this tool. There's not a lot necessary because the peppers are green and light green. You want to get rid of some of this hard burnt umber because it's going to blend in with the green and make a brown. And we don't really need a hard, a heavy brown color in some of these. So I want to get rid of some of these brown areas where I don't think um, And so, okay, so um, I'm going to end this particular demo right here because I think that's about a half an hour. And then I'm going to do another demo. Uh, right after this, um, and we'll do the color. And so this is the end of part one, uh, the drawing. And I will take a photo of this and post it on Patreon as well. All right, so stay tuned.